Sheriff's office says a thief stole a car with a child inside on the east side. How the vehicle and the one-year-old were found. Fierce winds fueling flames at a mobile home park, destroying two homes. How crews were able to save other homes from burning to the ground. It's been windy for the last 12 hours or so. We're going to see these winds finally calm down tonight. We're going to have the latest on some freezing temperatures, too. That's coming up. Live from Chase at 12, the news at noon starts right now. Former Constable Michelle Berrientes Vela in court for the first time since a grand jury indicted her. The Bear County Sheriff candidate forced to appear in the middle of early voting. Dylan Collier was the first to uncover the possible corruption within the constable's office. And he is live downtown with more about today's hearing. Dylan? And Barrientes Vela was in and out of Judge Ron Ron Hell's courtroom in under an hour. Her attorney saying today's hearing set the table for how evidence will be exchanged in this case. And there is a lot of it. Barrientes Vela and her former captain, Mark Garcia, were indicted last fall following a 10 hour raid at her northwest side offices. That raid led to an indictment in January and a list of charges that include aggravated perjury and official oppression. Since that indictment over the last month, Barrientes Vela has hired a stable of high powered attorneys, including the former Bear County District Attorney Nico LaHood. We're not afraid of a fight, and so she deserves good, honest representation, and she has a good team working for her, so God willing, the right result will, result will come from this. Barrientes Vela left court without commenting, so did Garcia. They are both expected to make their next appearances in the next 60 days. Live outside the Bear County Justice Center, Dylan Collier, KSAT 12 News. New this noon, a heart-wrenching morning for the parents of a child living on the east side. That's after their truck was stolen with their one-year-old inside. It's all happening in the 7,000 block of Celestial Moon. The Bear County Sheriff's Office says just after 7 this morning, a dad was loading up his kids in his truck. He put one in the truck and then went inside to get the other child. When he came out, his truck was gone, and so was his child. The Bear County Sheriff says a thief took off in the vehicle. Thankfully, it appears that suspect may have had some remorse after realizing who was in the back seat. It appears that they realized that they had a one-year-old in the back seat. Uh, they dumped the truck here. In kind of an interesting twist, we find out that the suspect, it appears, actually called the jack-in-the-box and uh, told them that there was a baby left out here in the truck they may want to get it checked on. It appears he called twice. Yeah, here that the sheriff refers to is that found was the truck was found at I-10 and Foster Road. A worker at the restaurant found the phone calls suspicious, so that's why they called the deputies. The baby checked out is okay. BCSO says the suspect could face several charges. The sheriff office asked that if you know something that can help them with this case, you can email them at bcsotips at bear.org. Strong winds and massive flames this morning. Bear County Fire says that combination made it tough to fight an early morning fire that destroyed two homes. The blaze breaking out at the Jasper Mobile Home Park in the 6700 block of Walls Road. Sarah Acosta shows us all the damage. Raging flames taking down two mobile homes early Wednesday morning in Northeast Bear County. Ash and smoke swirling in the air because of powerful winds. Wind was horrendous. Bear County Fire District 10 Battalion Chief Robert Hogan says strong wind gusts made fighting the flames challenging. He says they got the call around 2 Wednesday morning to the Jasper Mobile Home Park where two homes were on fire. He believes a fire started at an abandoned home then the wind spread that fire to the home next door where a family of four lived. With the, the wind, the 20 plus mile an hour winds, it was blowing embers about 400 feet that direction. The family with two adults and two children got out of their home safely and no one was hurt. The Bear County Fire Department says the family's dog, however, died in the flames. Battalion Chief Hogan says they worried the fire would spread more that's why crews evacuated a third home next door and fire crews from several cities like Windcrest, Converse and Kirby were called out to help. Because of the winds and, and our concerns of it spreading to 
the commercial structures back this direction as well as this third trailer, we automatically put a second alarm on it. Arson investigators with the Bear County Fire Marshal trying to figure out exactly what caused the fire this morning. Battalion Chief Hogan telling us that squatters are known to frequent the abandoned home. However, when they arrived this morning, no one was inside. From Northeast Bear County, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Also new this noon, a driver is killed after crashing into a tree in East Bear County. The Bear County Sheriff's Office says that that driver was dealing with some sort of medical episode. The 43-year-old woman crashed in the 11,000 block of Highway 87 East around 8 this morning. She was pronounced dead at the scene. An early morning taco run took a deadly turn for a woman on the northeast side. San Antonio police say that she was hit by a pickup truck while crossing Nacogdoches Road just south of Wurzbach Parkway. As Katrina Weber reports, police say she died just after picking up breakfast from a nearby restaurant. Officers initially responding to a call about a person lying in the street around 6 this morning quickly were able to see, even in the dark, what actually had happened. It was an accident, a crash between a truck and a uh, female individual who was crossing the street. Within minutes of their arrival, police determined that woman, possibly in her 60s, had died. At the scene on Nacogdoches Road, just south of Wurzbach Parkway, they also found the pickup that hit her. They say they spoke with the driver, along with several witnesses, who all told the same story of what sounds like an unavoidable crash. Right now we don't see anything criminal, but we always check into everything. That included taking measurements, carefully marking off the area where it happened. They found streak marks on the ground, indicating the driver had tried to break. The impact knocked the woman out of her boots and sent a paper bag she was carrying flying. According to police, the woman had just left a Mexican food restaurant in this parking lot and was attempting to cross the street in the middle when she was hit. A man who witnessed the crash told me he sees people do this every day and he worried that this might happen. It's always dangerous out here when it's dark. Police say in this case, there was at least one more risk factor involved. They say the woman was not in a crosswalk at the time. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. A scare at a warehouse on the northeast side after a fire started inside that warehouse. Crews called out around 7 this morning. Firefighters say a paint booth caught fire inside the Barrage Manufacturing Company warehouse. This is near Ritterman Road and Frat Road. Crews tell us a motor overheated inside that warehouse. The flames extinguished quickly and no one was hurt. And now these men are on SAPD's radar. Officers accused the pair of robbing a 7-Eleven on the northwest side. They tell us the men walked into the store in the 5700 block of Babcock back on February 20th. They demanded the cashier hand over the money. The worker told police it looked like one of the suspects was hiding a weapon. Police say they drove off in a black sedan with cash. If you know who they are and where police might be able to find them, you can call Crime Stoppers at 224-STOP. This noon, police continue searching for the people behind a drive-by shooting that left an eight-year-old boy hurt. The shooting happened yesterday afternoon in the 4300 block of Wild Oak Drive on the city's east side. Police Chief William McManus said the boy and his stepfather were unloading groceries from their car. They were in the driveway when two people in a silver van shot at him, hitting the child. McManus said officers believe they know who the shooters are and why the shooting happened, but no arrests have been made yet. The boy is still recovering in the hospital. At last check, his condition was stable. A man is still trying to win his job back with the San Antonio Police Department. That arbitration will be entering its third day today. Back on Back in 2016, Matthew Luckhurst was involved in giving a homeless man a sandwich that apparently had dog excrement in it. And another incident that some year uh, that that involved feces in the same year of a woman's restroom at a bike patrol headquarters. Yesterday, Lockhart took full responsibility for that act. A female officer testified that she felt res disrespected when she found the mess in the bathroom. She was eight and a half months pregnant at the time. More cases of the coronavirus being reported in more countries. Why lawmakers are worried the U.S. may not be prepared for a major outbreak in our country. And also coming up in a few minutes, now that the Spurs are finally back home, we got to talk to Patty Mills about his all-star break trip to Australia. Larry Mirrors with that coming up.
We want to bring you the latest on the coronavirus emergency. A warning now from the Centers of Disease Control asking Americans to begin taking precautions. This comes as President Trump continues to maintain that everything is under control. ABC's Alex Preche has more from Washington. Today, new cases of coronavirus are reported in Croatia, Brazil, and Canada. The CDC saying that it's not a question of if the virus will spread more widely in the United States, but when. We are asking the American public to work with us to prepare in the expectation that this could be bad. President Trump will have a press conference with the CDC, but has insisted the situation will, quote, work out fine, tweeting, the CDC and my administration are doing a great job of handling coronavirus. I want to start with a matter of urgency. On Capitol Hill, lawmakers continuing the debate of the country's state of readiness. The immediate risk to the American public remains low, but there is now community transmission in a number of countries, including outside of Asia, which is deeply concerning. It is alarming that the administration is proposing to take money from one emergency to pay for another. The government says it could need around 300 million masks to fight an outbreak. Right now, it only has about 30 million. At a 3M plant in South Dakota where those masks are made, they're working round the clock and it's still not enough. President Trump asking Congress for two and a half billion dollars, emergency funding. Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer saying that's not enough. He will propose his own $8.5 billion emergency funding bill in the Senate. If you do not have enough money in the $2.5 billion you asked for, you will come back and ask for it, uh, additional funds. Is that correct? Absolutely. Officials say a coronavirus vaccine is still at least several months away. For now, health officials are urging Americans be more vigilant by cleaning the surfaces they touch, washing their hands, and covering their mouths and noses when they cough. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. Live look outside with live cam. Um, we're going to start with, we want to get all of the cliches out of the way. Hang on to your hat. Yeah. Skirt alert. Rocks in your pockets. Rocks in your pockets. Carry a brick with you. The forecast blew you away. Ooh, there you go. Like that. well, let's do them all. Yeah. We've, got them all there. We've got a whole hour to do this. <laughs> <laughs> the wind was an issue overnight, that's for sure. The wind's starting to calm a little bit, though. We're going to see less wind as we get into this evening. The aquifer is down quite a bit, almost half a foot to 673.1 in your pollen count. Everything's low, no big deal there. Mold, hackberry, juniper, oak, all in the low category. We're going to talk about less wind, but some possibly freezing temperatures tonight. It's coming up. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV. It should be noted what we just saw, the stock market after two days of tremendous wow. losses in positive territory up 100 points today. At least it's in positive territory. Yes. Yeah. So, so is this a on. go fly a kite day if you, as long as you hang on to it? Okay, how yeah. many more so cliches do we have left? I think we've worked through all of them. <laughs> no, ones, there's so. more. Yeah, there's there's more. There's but well, Just keep keep the wheels turning. We'll, we'll uh, Come on, put them in there somewhere. Go fly a kite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, it was windy. Uh, there's no doubt about it. The wind gusts last night were pretty impressive. Take a look at these. Wow. 44. 44. Peak wind gust here in San Antonio. 38 in Castroville. 44 in Hondo. So the numbers were pretty large. We're starting to see these wind gusts come down a little bit. But it's still breezy out there. We got blue skies. 50 degrees at the airport. Dew point is at 25. That number is very low. The air is very dry. We've got north northwesterly winds at 14. Gusting to 25. So a little bit better. And uh, you can see the gusts around the area. 20 in New Valley. 28 right now. The peak gusts are the current wind gusts there in Catula, 32 in Victoria. And the satellite picture shows we're basically cloud free here. We've got a couple clouds off to our east, and so we may have some mostly sunny skies across your eastern counties, but uh, no big deal there. 46 right now in Kerrville, 49 Uvalde, so we're still in the 40s in the hill country. Everybody else is in the 50s. We're trying to warm up some. I'm thinking mid 50s this afternoon for a high temperature. And you can see the cold stuff extends up there into North Texas, so 35. Current reading there in Amarillo. They were down in the teens this morning. There was some cold air behind the storm system, that front that came through. So why is it windy? Well, we have high pressure at the surface over West Texas. We got an area of low pressure down here along the front. And when these uh, get close together, you get that tight pressure gradient. And that creates those gusty winds that you see. Now, on the flip side of this is this high pressure that's out over 
West Texas moves a little bit closer, moves over top of us, the winds actually go lighter. And that makes for cold conditions because you get the light winds, you get the clear skies underneath this ridge of high pressure or this uh, area of high pressure. And that allows those temperatures to really crater. So that'll be the big story tonight. Our temperatures near freezing. Our average last freeze, February 27th. So this works out. This, uh, this would be tomorrow, obviously, and that's when we're expecting tomorrow morning those temperatures to dip below freezing. So we'd be right on average if this were our last freeze. We'll see about that. The latest freeze we've ever seen, April 3rd, which was in 1987. So we still can get freezes well into March and April. We'll see how it plays out. But the uh, forecast temperatures uh, by, say, uh, 12 o'clock today, the 40s, they'll jump up into the 50s this afternoon. And then tonight, falling off quickly. 30 here in San Antonio, potentially, with some 20s in the hill country. So freezing temperatures tomorrow morning, something to keep in mind. Big picture here, this storm system's moving away. We've got a lot of snow up across the Great Lakes, storms out across Florida. This is a big system. It's moving east and away from us. But there's quiet weather in its wake, and this is what is shifting into Texas. So we're going to get some quiet weather as we get into the weekend. The weather actually looks really good Friday, Saturday, into Sunday once we get past some of this cold and windy stuff. So the forecast for today, 54 for a high. We'll drop off again quickly tonight, 51, 6 o'clock, down to 36 by midnight. Winds will gradually decrease. So we're talking 10 to 20 gusting, a little bit higher than that right now, but I'd say 5 to 10 overnight. And we start off at 30, but we're up to 63 tomorrow afternoon, 70 on Friday, 72 Saturday. More clouds on Sunday and humidity, too. That may eventually lead to some showers Monday into Tuesday. So wind dying down late this afternoon. Yeah, it's going to take some time. And once the sun goes down, then you'll really start to notice the wind going away, but you'll notice the temperatures plummeting. Plummeting. Gone yeah. with the wind. That's right. Oh, there's another one. Like Put it in there I like that. Good, good. <laughs> All the wind cliches. We're, we're, we're going to go through all of them today. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We've been going through all that today. Speaking of cliches, cool <laughs> backs against the wall, I guess, and maybe a little early for that, but, you know, with 26 games left, they better get something going in the right direction, shouldn't they? Yeah, Spurs are, what, three and a half games yeah. out of the eighth and final playoff spot, but just 26 games to go in the regular season, and they're hosting the Mavericks tonight, who are 2-0 and against the Spurs this season, so it's not going to be easy, but the Spurs are back home. That's a good thing. And last night, LeBron out Zion. Coming up. Nature boy Rick Flair was courtside for the Lakers and Pelicans in the first meeting between LeBron and Zion in Big Board Sports. Well, the Spurs will tip off a three-game homestand tonight. And first up, the Dallas Mavericks. Spurs big man LaMarcus Aldridge is out with right shoulder soreness. So 26 games left in the regular season. The Spurs start the day 10th in the West, three and a half games out of eighth. They have 15 home games to go, and tonight is their first home contest since February 1st. Getting home, sleeping in your own bed, get to see your dogs, your family, whatever you have. Um, drive your own car, back, to, back and forth to work, whatever it may be, get back on your schedule. The comfortability of, of being at home uh, in your, you know, your practice facility and, and getting what you need. Home cooked meals, that, all, that whole thing. You don't think about it much, but when you're on the road for a whole month and, and you don't have that, um, you know, you can, you can sometimes feel a bit out of whack. So to get that back um, and that comfortable, comfortable feeling, I think, will, will be huge for us. But, uh, you know, hopefully we can, we can dig in and, and settle in a little bit now. Good to be back home. Spurs will host the Mavericks tonight at 730. Yesterday was our first opportunity to visit with Patty since his humanitarian effort during the NBA All-Star break. That's when he flew all the way back to his home country of Australia to aid his fellow countrymen in their recovery from the wild, wild fires that have claimed lives, property, and wildlife. It was very fulfilling. It was um, a satisfying trip, uh, personally. Um, and, and it was only that because, you know, we, we were able to make a positive impact for other people that were in, uh, in desperate need. Um, it was good for me to be able to um, see firsthand um, instead of through the media on, on how directly we could help. Um, so that gave me a, a good idea of, um, of how to help. And last night, Spurs first round draft pick Luka Samanich helped the future of basketball by teaching kids in the Spurs 
youth basketball clinic, the fundamentals of the game, but also the importance of respect as part of Spurs Give. This went down at the Mays Family YMCA on Petrenko. Pelicans at the Lakers last night. The first meeting between Zion and LeBron, and the both guys put on a great show. First quarter, deep pass goes to Zion, who catches and dunks it with LeBron watching. The Brook with 29 points and six rebounds, but LeBron is the king of his court. Danny Green, the James and the Staples Center, loves that one. James scored a season high and game high 40, and the Lakers beat the Pels 118 to 109. Explosive. Um, very explosive, very quick um, at his size. Um, so, you know, nothing surprised me though. It was a great experience. Uh, he's an incredible player. His resume speaks for himself. Loss keeps the Pelicans ninth in the West and just percentage points ahead of the Spurs, who are in 10th. Yeah, those two guys are great, but I think Ric Flair stole the show. <laughs> right. He was the best show, yeah. I think so. <laughs> All right, Larry, thank you. You got it. Coming up today at 5, batter, sauces, and spilled over grease. Over time, grime can build up in your oven, and the longer you leave it there, the smoke could ruin your next batch of baked goods. That's where the self-cleaning option comes in. So how well does it work? Some reports puts the feature to the test today at 5 after Entertainment Tonight. Now to the fallout from last night's Democratic debate in South Carolina. Former Vice President Joe Biden has picked up a major endorsement ahead of Saturday's primary, though much of the focus on Tuesday was centered on frontrunner Bernie Sanders. ABC's Trevor Alt has the latest for us. Ahead of Saturday's pivotal South Carolina primary, former Vice President Joe Biden picking up a major endorsement from Representative Jim Clyburn, one of the most influential politicians in the state. But I want the public to know that I'm voting for Joe Biden South Carolinas should be voting for Joe Biden. That endorsement coming the morning after Biden declared on the debate stage. I intend to win South Carolina and I will win the African-American vote here in South Carolina. Biden is still leading in South Carolina polls, but much of Tuesday's fiery and at times chaotic debate was aimed at the national front runner, Senator Bernie Sanders. Bernie, in fact, hasn't passed much of anything. I do not think that this is the best person to lead the ticket. Progressives have got one shot and we need to spend it with a leader who will get something done. I'm hearing my name mentioned a little bit tonight. <laughs> I, I wonder why. With she was rivals pouncing on his policies, the senator stood firm. Do we think health care for all, Pete, is some kind of radical communist idea? Do Wait, we think let's raising talk. Let's talk the minimum that. wage to I, a living wage? To the question. That is why I am beating that. Trump in virtually every Thank poll you. that has done and why I will Lord. defeat him. Saturday's South Carolina primary is the last before the race goes national. Super Tuesday now less than a week away with 15 states up for grabs that day. Trevor Alt, ABC News, New York. More than a million Venezuelans now living in Colombia. That's according to immigration officials in Colombia. A new report from the Colombian government states 58% of Venezuelans in the country are undocumented. The cities with the highest concentration of Venezuelans are Bogota, Barranquilla, and Medellin. A political crisis in Venezuela sparked an exodus in mid-2015, which has climbed steadily in the face of crippling hyperinflation, food and medicine shortages, as well as high crime. Outside with live cam, the winds were blowing really, really hard. Now they're just blowing hard. And they'll keep blowing hard for the rest of the day, I guess. I That's a know. good description. Yeah, you breeze it. Yeah. It was breezy. windy this morning. Now it's becoming more breezy, but uh, the, the winds are calming at least a little bit. Uh, the sunrise this morning, gorgeous. We had a lot of great pictures coming in on our KSAT Connect. Don't forget to send those pictures in, by the way. You can find uh, the, the KSAT Connect on our KSAT weather app. And we love these pictures. Take a look at that. Some good colors out in Seguin. Uh, that's from the uh, back deck that was taken by George, it looks like. That one might be in there. That's that's a really good view. We appreciate the picture. Here are the look at the wind gusts right now. We're still looking at breezy conditions area wide. Gusts right now in San Antonio, 25 miles per hour, still gusting to 32 in New Braunfels, gusting to 30 in Fredericksburg. So the winds are still a problem, but I do think by this evening we're talking more 5 to 15 miles per hour. These gusts will come down below 20 miles per hour, and then by tonight these winds will go fairly calm. 48 degrees right now in Boulevardi, 45 Bernie State, so still pretty chilly, especially north of San Antonio. 
You'll find 50s here across the city. Still probably jacket weather. That will certainly be the case tonight. As uh, the sun goes down, the winds die down, but the temperatures will really fall off. I think by 10 o'clock we're down to 40. And uh, winds will calm to about 5 to 10 miles per hour overnight, leading to some very chilly temperatures by tomorrow morning. We'll have more on the potential for a freeze coming up here in just a few minutes. Guys. Thank you, Justin. It is the number one killer of Americans. It is heart disease, and it's most often caused by high blood pressure. Max Massey reports making one small change when you eat can actually prevent the disease, even if you're at risk right now. If you want to reduce your blood pressure, reduce the amount of salt you eat. According to a new study in the medical journal BMJ, there is strong evidence that cutting the amount of sodium in your diet decreases blood pressure in those with existing hypertension and in people who are not yet at risk. The greater the reduction in salt intake, the greater the fall in blood pressure, the study showed, particularly those higher at risk, such as the elderly, those with existing high blood pressure, and African Americans. The American Heart Association says that in the United States, more than 40% of African American men and women have high blood pressure. African Americans are also more likely to develop hypertension early in life, where prevention can make a big impact. The lead author says salt reduction Reduction efforts should be reinforced to save millions of people suffering and dying from strokes and heart diseases every year. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration says average Americans consumed almost 50 percent more sodium than is generally recommended. The agency says most of that sodium comes from processed or prepared foods like the kind you find on grocery store shelves in boxes usually and at restaurants. $1.6 billion, that's how much money an opioid company will give to dozens of states after reaching a settlement. The company Mollenkrot says this deal resolves drug-related claims against its subsidiaries. The agreement is worth attorneys general for 47 states in U.S. territories. The payments for plaintiffs will be reached over an eight-year period, or received over an eight-year period. Funds will be used to help take care of addiction costs and additional needs. Scientists make an ancient discovery, a billion-year-old fossil. It's believed to be an ancestor of Earth's very first plants. Take a look. These tiny freckles found on a rock in northern China, they're actually a billion-year-old seaweed microfossil. Previously, the oldest known fossilized green algae was only 800 years, million years old. That's 800 million years old. These are a lot more than that, a billion years old. Scientists say the find could hold the key to understanding the origins of plant life on Earth. Big difference between a billion and 800 million if you're a fossil. A couple of years. <laughs> you're never too old to find the love of your life. Coming up in the spotlight, well, ABC is now looking for senior citizens who are in the mood for a little romance. And the Dallas Cowboys are running out of time to get a deal done with Dak Prescott. Larry Ramirez with an update on that situation coming up. A new petition is circulating online and is asking that airlines let parents sit with the kids without charging them more money. Why the petition says the request is not just about convenience. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV. An online petition asking airlines to allow kids to sit with their parents during flights without charging extra fees. For families who buy basic economy seats, they can't choose assigned seats. So children could and do end up seated away from their parents. Last week, Consumer Reports posted the petition demanding airlines put safety over profits. The petition reads children 13 or under should sit with their families while flying and should not be charged extra fees to do so. It specifically calls out American, Delta, and United. United and American say they are addressing this specific concern. Delta, though, says that they encourage customers within, with who have seating concerns to contact the airline as soon as possible. McDonald's marking the 50th anniversary of its Shamrock Shake, not with a pot of gold, but a cup of gold. The 18-carat gold cup worth $90,000 being auctioned off. The proceeds will go to the Ronald McDonald Charities. 
Live look outside with live cam. We're going to keep our cliches going as long as the wind is going as well. Uh, still go windy out there. Okay. And we have Justin here. He's gotten a second wind. Oh. Wow. Has David used rocks in the pocket yet? Yeah, he did we, that yeah, a couple times. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Been done. We might be running out. Yeah. Uh, 50 degrees so far today. That's our current temperature. 39 the low this morning. We're going to be much colder by tomorrow morning. The averages are 69 and 47. So below average in both regards. Records are 91 and 22. Set back in 1954 and 1974. And no rainfall. Could we see some rain down the line that we'll take a look coming up. In the spotlight, a new dating show is looking for contestants, but there is a catch. You have to be a senior citizen. Leave it alone, Justin. Don't even sorry. I'm happily married. Thank you very much. Leave it alone. The new show was created by the people behind the ABC series, The Bachelor. The casting call says they are looking for men and women in their golden years. Applicants have to be legal U.S. residents, active, outgoing, and single. More information is posted on the network's website. A classic universal horror story is back with a modern twist. This time the story focuses on the leading lady. CNN's Rick Demagella has a preview of The Invisible Man. Cecilia, although our relationship was far from perfect, I thought that you would talk to me rather than run away. Are you okay? Open the door! Elizabeth Moss plays a woman terrorized by her controlling presumed dead ex-boyfriend in The Invisible Man. The film brings a classic movie monster into the modern era and takes a hard look at issues of domestic abuse and gaslighting. It feels like you're boxing with a shadow, like you can't quite grasp the person. And so the idea that this, that, that Cecilia, my character, is getting out of this relationship and just keeps saying this is true, this is true, and no one believes her and no one's listening, I mean, it couldn't be more relevant for our times. The only thing more brilliant than inventing something that makes you invisible is coming up with the perfect way to torture you, even in death. The character fits that those themes like a glove, you know? He's an unseen man who is, you know, stalking and torturing and harassing people, so it kind of fits in to that area. I think the Lee has done brilliantly to kind of incorporate all of that and make it pal palatable to an audience by having it be in a horror film. Where are you? Where are you? Show yourself! Come on! Do it! There you are. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Action. I might actually go see that, even though I don't like horror movies. I love Elizabeth Moss. That's pretty good. Yeah, it does. Yeah. All right, yeah. so um, wind is going to be dying down, mm -hmm. and then we're really going to need our coats. Yeah, you know, we haven't had a whole lot of freezes this no. winter, but this one's, this one's got, I think we'll get there here in San Antonio. It's not going to be below freezing for a long period or anything like that. But Do we need have, to cover our tomato plants that we started too early you with? Know, uh, you might want to be careful with that or bring some of that tender vegetation inside if you can, if you've already put some of that out there. Because uh, I do think uh, even in downtown San Antonio, we could get down close to freezing. 50 degrees right now. And you can see this morning we had a beautiful sunrise, had a few clouds. Those clouds are generally going away. You can see off in the distance there, a few clouds off to our east, but that's it. Dew point is at 25. We got north northwesterly winds at about 14 miles per hour. And you look at the wind gusts here, still up around 25 in San Antonio, gusting to 28 in Kerrville, gusting to 24 in Carrizo Springs. So the wind is still there. It's not as strong as it was this morning, but still there nonetheless. We're going to see some breezy winds next couple of hours before they finally do start dying down some. Temperature wise, 45 Bernie stage, 47 whole 52 Rio Medina, 51 right now in Hondo. Zoom me out some, still in the 40s, Rack Springs up to Junction, and then uh, San Antonio South, we're talking generally 50s here. I'll show you the dew points. We know the air is dry, uh, but I, I want to point this out because the air is dry, we've got gusty winds. Those two combined, we have a, a pretty serious fire threat, especially off to the west of San Antonio. So that's always something we have to monitor as well in these kind of conditions. But so far, we're doing okay here. And you see some of the clouds, a few of them off to the east of San Antonio. There's not much there. So we're not going to worry about cloud cover today. Plenty of sun. The storm system that brought the clouds with it uh, is moving out to the east. You can see all the clouds across parts of uh, Arkansas and Louisiana. There'll be some rain. There's some snow up across Great Lakes. Some heavy snow, I might add, up around Detroit. But we're certainly not seeing that here in Texas. 
high pressure, the surface out over West Texas, we had our area of low pressure down there in the Gulf of Mexico. And these two pretty close together, you get that tight pressure gradient. And that's why you get these gusty winds sort of funneling through here in South Texas. But as high pressure moves over top of us, the winds go light. We get the clear skies. We showed you the dry air. This is a perfect combination for some cold temperatures tonight. So let's take a look at how cold we could go. I think uh, by this afternoon, we're talking mid 50s here in San Antonio, Hondo, Uvalde, maybe some 40s still in the Hill Country. But tonight, those numbers fall off very quickly. I think we could get as low as 30 here in San Antonio, especially the outlying areas. And then we're talking 20s in the Hill Country. Freezing potentially New Braunfels, San Antonio, Hondo, Uvalde over to Pleasanton, even Del Rio, and probably south of that, it'll be a close call. Uh, but it is going to be very chilly. And I'll point out that our average last freeze is February 27th. Doesn't mean we won't freeze again. This is an average here, but uh, we are going to see that tomorrow, right on the, uh, our, the day of our average last freeze. And uh, we have seen a freeze as late as April 3rd, back in 1987. So we can't let our, uh, let our guard down just yet. But... Uh, just something to uh, keep in mind there, too. Forecast for today, 54 degrees, the high temperature. We'll see the numbers fall off quickly tonight. Again, less wind. And then uh, 63 tomorrow, 70 on Friday, 72 Saturday, 77 Sunday. We'll get more moisture on Sunday. And with another system moving by Monday into Tuesday, we may get some showers out of that. All right. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. More Spurs with Larry coming up. A couple of guys just going to have to pick up the scoring a little bit. Probably going to play a little bit more fast paced. Jakob and the Spurs will play the Mavericks without LA in Big Board Sports. The Spurs are back home and they will face the Mavs tonight without LaMarcus Aldridge, who's out with right shoulder soreness. So that means the Spurs will play without their second leading score this season. With 26 games left in the regular season, Spurs are certainly running out of time to make the playoffs. Every game is very important. Plus, there's always Texas pride on the line when the Spurs face the Rockets or the Mavs. Yeah, it's huge. I mean, all the games are massive. We are just take it one at a time. Um, we know we don't have a lot of time left, so we got to uh, be ready to go from the jump. Yeah, I mean, a uh, little well, Texas pride, you know. Uh, you want to go out and compete. I mean, right now there's other things at stake, but it's always a, a consideration, yeah. Spurs will host the Mavs tonight at 7.30. Dallas is favored by five. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Dallas Cowboys Vice President Stephen Jones dropping a bombshell during his appearance at the NFL Combine in Indianapolis, revealing that he and representatives of Dak Prescott haven't talked since September. That's some reports indicated that the Cowboys quarterback went up on his price for a new long-term contract extension. The clock is ticking since the window for getting a new long-term deal done closes March 10th. That's the day the Cowboys would have to use the franchise tag to hold on to Prescott and give him a one-year salary of $27 million. Now, there's also the new collective bargaining agreement that is being offered to the players by the NFL. Still, is Jones surprised the new deal has not gotten done? Once we didn't get it done, you know, right there at the beginning of the season, it certainly doesn't surprise me that it's not done yet right now. I mean, I was surprised that we didn't get it done at the beginning of the season. And uh, obviously, you know, Jerry's thoughts on it. We all thought we were close. You know, I wouldn't say there was anything acrimonious. We just uh, we felt like we were kind of where we were, and we never really got going again. Texans general manager and head coach Bill O'Brien made the trip to Indianapolis for the NFL Combine and check out what future draft picks can help out his team. It's the first time we've heard from O'Brien since he fired Romeo Cornell as his defensive coordinator following that meltdown against the Chiefs to end their season and promoting Anthony Weaver. Weave and I have spent a lot of time together talking about defense. Um, you know, I've, I've interviewed Weave. I've, I've, I've talked to him about what he would do uh, if he was ever the defensive coordinator, and he's, he did a great job in those meetings. Very bright guy, has a really good grasp of the whole defense. And then he'll bring his own, his own you know, style to our defense, and I think the players will be excited about it. And for the Texans' sake, hopefully his new defensive mentality will help take that D to another level. Yeah, they, they blew that one against the Chiefs. No, yep. I think the Chiefs, actually. <laughs> Look who won the Super Bowl. Yeah, right? Yeah. Is it college football season yet? We can always talk about Patrick Mahomes, okay. Texas Tech. <laughs> <laughs> always, always 
it's always time for Essay Live. Too. It is. Hey, you know, we've got a lot on the show today. Oh, and yes. What's better than food? Oh, how about this? How about some free stuff? Are you ready for this? Don't say we don't take care of our audience because we are about to. Can I get a drum roll, please? Thank you for that assist. All right, we're going to tell you how you can win a family four pack of tickets to the San Antonio Spring Home and Garden Show. Also, to SeaWorld, a family four pack to SeaWorld and drum roll again. We're going to need that double drum roll. Shh. Spurs tickets. Yeah. Courtside. Yeah. Spurs tickets. Now, courtside. Courtside. Now mm -hmm. we have food, and mm -hmm. Naomi Hendricks, oh yeah, go, okay, owner of Root and Soul Food, is here, and she brought lunch <gasps> broccoli cheese soup. I love it in a bread bowl. So this is all vegan, right? This is an all vegan broccoli cheddar soup made with whole foods. It's just vegetables on top of veg vegetables on top of vegetables, but you would never be able to tell by the flavor. I can't. I can't either. It's oh my tasty. gosh. Mm. Mm. So right. what I did was I used potatoes and cashews to make that creamy flavor you taste in there, and there's actually no artificial cheese involved. That is mm -hmm. really, really creamy. We're gonna have some more great recipes as well. Hey, we're going to the dogs. That's right, the San Antonio Spring Home and Garden Show has it all. You can even pick up some training tips. So we are going to show you how you can help get your fur baby up to speed. The tallest, the fastest wooden roller coaster in Texas, Etsy World, we ride it. Yes, with my ride or die right there, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up.